Welcome, everybody, and thank you for pitching up. Just before I unpack what we're at and what's happening and related to the uh, the project that you were all due to come and see at Tremo, I just a very quick look back because actually we've been delivering for Cornwall Council the, the Cornish language learning and uh, communications contract for several years. And previously, this was all done through what we called the cluster model, which involved working in a gang of schools in a geographical location. Um, we did uh, the run up to Christmas at the Scarred. We did the run up to St. Piran's Day at uh, Penzance. And we also worked in Camberon. And the idea was that we work with those schools and local shops and businesses to chuck everything out onto the streets at the end for, for a treasure trail for families which was very successful uh, and it's put, particularly in, in Penzance we had people biting our hands off to come back the next year however once Covid happened we knew that a drastic reinvention was going to be needed and lo and behold it's an ill wind that blows no good we actually think what we're, we've come up with now is more better again than the previous iteration of the work we were doing um, and I have to of course uh, thank uh, Mark Trevethan for making the initial suggestion about how we might reconfigure our work for schools. So we stayed with the branding of Go Cornish, but it is now in this iteration, Go Cornish for Primary Schools. And a new little strapline on Low and Hay Gans Canoeic, having fun with the Cornish language. Um, so I think I, I need to just, just give you a, a, a tiny glimpse into the route we've been through over the last year during these various lockdowns and our with our inability to physically deliver in schools for most of the work we're doing um and the place we started here was was that mark trevethan brought to us the welsh language charter for schools which we found very very interesting and used as a, a starting point but we went a lot further than that. We also um, explored in some detail and met up with the Manx, who in some ways have a, a, a slightly more analogous situation in terms of the size of the Isle of Man and the, the population and the number of speakers. Um, but um, we also were looking at the other examples of award schemes that schools might sign up for. So we, we looked at we looked at arts, Mark, and we looked at healthy schools um, and uh, more than just looked at them, went and talked to them. We also then put out an online survey to find out. We were very keen to be talking to real teachers and real head teachers. And from that survey, we had about a 90 percent uh, response from existing practitioners saying that they did understand what the heck we were going on about uh, and that. It, 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 there was a clarity to the offer, and I hope by the end of this presentation you will agree with that. Um, we also had uh, a, a good, a good strong feedback in terms of it being an attractive thing, and that was a very important uh, component with all the work we do. We, we don't want to be bashing people with a stick, we'd rather be luring them with the carrot. And here's an important one about it being achievable. Now, actually, I'm really happy that 70% think it's achievable already because we believe once they have a go, they'll realise it really is achievable. And we've always wanted to, uh, as an as a ex-teacher myself, I know just how bombarded schools are with initiatives and ideas and um, things, what they have to do and things they might like to do. And we were really clear from the beginning that this would be minimal uh, stress upon a working teacher. Of those who responded, which included uh, lowly teachers, high-flying head teachers, and even CEOs of mats, we had a 70% said they'd like to be in the first tranche to sign up. Again, I'm really happy with that as a, uh, as a percentage in that the main reason people were saying not sure was usually because they weren't positioned within their school to have that kind of authority, or they were saying, we've got a lot on right now, can we join in directly? Um, but the point is that it was, a, it was a very positive response from that survey that we put out. So um, even though we've been under lockdown, that hasn't actually prevented us from doing some actual delivery in real schools with 
real pupils. So we have worked in nine schools um, over this academic year, um, which ends up being a total of uh, over a thousand pupils that we've worked with. And of course, on the first day back at school, uh, BBC Spotlight came along and filmed us working in Lanner, which was a cracking reach and had a lot of very positive feedback across social media. And as you may know, were we at a matter this morning, we'd have had both BBC Spotlight and ITV local news there, plus all the array of other uh, media presence as well. So there's there remains an appetite and we can hopefully engage that media appetite once more. Um, we already had a Go Cornish website, which catered for a very, very wide range of people interested in learning Cornish um, and perhaps had a slight bias towards adult learners. And what we've done is reconfigured the whole website so that now it actually the website leads with the primary school offer. That All that other material remains there. You've just got to find it a little because the main thing this, this website is now for is four teachers and four primary schools um, in the first instance. Now, what I'm going to ask now is I'm going to ask Vicky to play the little explainer film, um, which you find when you first visit that website. Welcome, Dinach, to Go Cornish for Primary Schools. This free Cornish language programme has three fun and engaging award levels, bronze, silver and gold. It's easy and simple to deliver, with low teaching time and minimal administration commitment, no previous Cornish language required at entry level, and all resources provided. Here's how to get involved. Head to the Go Cornish website and register your school. Then book your place on a welcome session and see how to use our resources to bring the Cornish language to life. You can then use your login to access and download everything you need from the Bank of Learning Resources. Now you're ready to Go Cornish! Deliver activities and sessions in your school. Self-evaluate and evidence your school's progress along the way. And complete your online assessment. Once you've received your digital award badge, it's time to celebrate. We will provide you with a How to Celebrate pack full of ways to share your success and re-register for the next award tier or maintain your current status. Register now and get started. Grenny Dalla from Lowen Hay Gans Kernowick. Let's start having fun with Cornish. We believe we've uh, devised a very simple pathway for teachers to tread. Having registered, we will run um, a set of CPD uh, little training sessions that unpack the resources, etc. The the school champion. The person who is our main contact in each school gets access to a, a full goodie bag of kit. And then, of course, the school starts to deliver. They get to share the, the progress and the success. Um, and then you go round and round again. So we're, we're, we're fairly confident that that's a, a simple path to tread. Of course, it has yet to be proved in the pudding. Um, and we'll, we shall see with our first tranche how they get on. The whole thing kicks off with what we're calling a runaround survey. Now this enables us to get proper baseline data and, and as Mark and others will know, getting, getting, some, getting solid data about uh, Cornish language and use and teaching has been uh, very problematic indeed. And in this way, the pupils themselves are the ones telling us what they know, what they don't know, where they've been, what they what they experience, can they see stuff around the school? Are they part of it? And here's um, here are the darlings from St Francis, who you would have met today, um, engaging in a little bit of thumbs up for a runaround survey. As you progress from bronze into silver and gold, you actually develop the role of the crew Kernoek, who are who are a gang of pupils who help actually devise the way and shape the program develops itself. Um, in, in the in, at bronze level, that's a very light touch. Um, so here's a, a glimpse for you about how the awards are spread. And if you look at the left where it says aim, you'll see that we're talking about awareness. Crikey, does the Cornish language exist? There's enjoyment. Crikey, can I have a bit of fun with it? There's engagement. Oh, my dear life. There's actually good stuff we can do. 
And each of those aims is then subdivided into three activities. And each of those activities, such as signage, runs across bronze, silver, gold, communication, bronze, silver, gold. So the notion being that there is a developmental strand in each of these activities that, that has a logic and a sense. Now, we obviously the land of silver and the land of gold is in the far off future just now. And we, we anticipate there'll be a fair bit of reinventing and tweakage before we get there. But in the first instance, at bronze, there are a couple of things to note. The first is, this is baby steps. Most schools are almost already there or thereabouts and all they need is to just nudge their practice a tiny bit. Um, and the other important thing to, to, uh, for us to stress is that we have promised that at bronze, we will provide every single resource that you need as a school in order to tick the box. You haven't got to go out and invent anything, rewrite anything, devise anything, unless you wish to. This, this chart is the summary, and there is a far more detailed version of exactly how those tick boxes work once you register. In fact, the school champion has access to a hyperlinked um, set of, of targets, which means they just click on it and, it, and it takes you to the resource, which you then deliver that enables you to tick the box you started with. So hopefully we're talking about making it very user friendly indeed so here is the glorious harry gooby uh year one teacher uh in falmouth st francis in falmouth um and he uh his his darlings were were loving it we the clap your kids with just means first chat in cornish and these are very very simple resources how to take the register each day in the first instance, we are not talking about sitting down for a 40 minute lesson in Cornish grammar. We're talking about little taste of bits and pieces that are dropped in organically through the day and that are fun and that the kids want to do well, and the teachers want to do. So as part of that Club of Kinza, for instance, we're talking about the simplicity of using please and thank you in Cornish. Um, and here's a glorious piece of Cornish voicing. My plague. Did you hear that? That that's uh, that's our Mama's. that's our resident fluent Cornish speaker, uh, Vicky, who you met earlier, um, who's who's just done a couple of voices quickly as examples. The point we're making here is that throughout all of the resources, every single time there's a bit of written Cornish, there's an audio file every time. So that that fear that people have, oh, crikey, I don't know how to say it. Hopefully we overcome that and actually before long people realize hang on this is phonetic and once i get a few basic rules under my skin I, I can have a bash um we've been working in short lanes end school uh teaching singing and these guys were going to come and sing to you this morning um and they've now got a whole repertoire of lovely stuff in cornish and, and other schools will be able to access the written words the dots on the stave um, audio files of the of it spoken, audio files of it sung, audio files of it performed by the children. It, all of this exists within the bank of resources. We're also um, helping schools use Cornish uh, in a non-classroom way, all kinds of ways around the school that are a little more uh, uh, extracurricular. And so these are examples of the kind of vocabulary we're providing in a, in a whole sweep of phrase books for different contexts. And our good buddies at Trelloeth have uh, gone the whole hog with a bilingual, bilingual uh, welcome to school sign, um, uh, which, as you can see, has been expertly nailed to the wall using our easel. But that is going up on the school wall in Trelloeth directly. Um, as well as that sort of uh, environmental use of Cornish, we've also got a whole bunch of informal activities. These kids on the left are playing cards entirely in Cornish um, it's, it, and they're having a lot of fun doing it. These, these guys are doing uh, word searches. So there are a whole bunch of kind of wet weather activities and games that schools can engage in. When it comes to teaching the language, we are still leading with the Tales from Port series that's been so successful. I don't know if people are familiar with that. The notion of this series is that 
these stories are all in the English language, but each character has a very short and very learnable catchphrase in Cornish, which gets repeated and repeated. And by the end of the story, the kids are, uh, are fully fledged with that phrase. But there's also a series of little unpackings using drama and creative approaches to, to apply that kind of grammatical rule, if you like, in other, in other situations. Um, one of the things that I think Mark uh, was keen on when we were discussing and shaping this is the fact that if you, all you ever do is encounter Cornish in a Cornish lesson, you know, it has no meaning or relevance outside of that school lesson silo. Um, and actually, we really like the idea that kids bump into Cornish across uh, across the curriculum. And so there's a whole bunch of creative um, and cross-curricular resources we've been knocking up. This particular one, um, we've been working with the uh, Historic Environment Service at Cornwall, uh, Cornwall Council using the splendid and under-celebrated Cornwall Council interactive map service, which gives you parishes and hundreds and place names and all sorts of things. So um, that's been uh, a joy to deliver. We did that with, uh, we tried that with Codes Green um, up in North Cornwall. Um, just to give you an example of the kind of cross-curricular approaches that we have been bringing, lots of people want to do Cornish mining. Um, at Key Stage 1, we're using the Manage and Remembers uh, picture book. And as you can see, you bump into a bit of accidental Cornish. And from that, you use drama and you use um, singing and, and uh, you explore the stories of, of Cornish mining characters. And there's another whole tranche of key stage two Cornish mining materials, which were originally commissioned by the Cornish Mining World Heritage site. And uh, we've given them a tweak to fit this platform and incorporate a little more Cornish language, etc. So the other big project, of course, we have on at the moment as a company is Kadroya. And we've got 17 schools, which weren't actually included in the, uh, uh, statistics at the top of the presentation because that was the, the Cornish language specific but actually all of these schools who've been working on the Cornish hedge detectives have also been using uh, uh, informally little bits of Cornish in terms of naming plants and animals uh, and understanding the landscape um, and as I said 17 different schools have had site visits using the, uh, the branded up could draw a double-decker bus from first kind of buses um, and it's been an absolute joy getting these kids out into the open air in the middle of Bomber Moor and uh, and walking around the labyrinth and understanding the tremendous cultural treasure that is the Cornish Hedge. So that's just a very brief taste of the kind of resources that we're offering as part of the package once you sign up uh, and I just want to share a couple of other things about process so we've we've created this closed group on facebook and again this is following very much what schools had told us they were up for um, and already coach green have shared a beautiful little video this week uh, of kids um, trying out some of the phrases from gullen from tales and porth um, and this will be a place where schools can can um, blow their own trumpet and uh, and share their success and and nudge other people about how much more better they are than them etc um once the school has done the delivering we've got a we've got a checklist which is actually framed in uh, in kiddie speak funny enough crew canoeic means Cornish crew and the idea is you've got this you've got this crew of kids with say one from each year group or whatever who go around the school and go can I see Cornish on a sign tick and um, that then gets submitted on a google form by the teacher champion and each of the little tick boxes has an evidence like a photograph or a little bit of film so the children themselves are very much engaged in their own self-assessment process once that assessment has been submitted you get your digital badge. Now, Vicky's the person who knows more about this than me, but I know that we were working with Rio and some people called Badge Nation about how you create a digital badge that has a, a proper um, endorsement uh, 
uh, sequence and so that actually the badge itself will be given by Cornwall Council and so you get this badge and then you are able to use it on your website you're able to put it up on your display etc etc it becomes uh, it becomes a little uh, another of your list of logos of pride um, and then of course having having got your badge you then have a chance to do a bit of celebrating and we're providing schools with uh, a pack, including uh, template uh, press releases, etc., and a bunch of suggestions about the ways they might like to communicate with the wider community and involve the wider community in the fun that they are having. And of course, the school then has that badge for two years, after which, or during which, they themselves make a call as to whether they're going to maintain that status and reapply in this case, because we're all starting at bronze, or aim higher. Um, as I sort of said at the beginning, I hope now we've not been able to have the in-person Meet World event is to now um, just make a slightly modified presentation um, that's targeted specifically at schools and to set those up as a number of Eventbrite sessions at different times, different days, so that schools can join those um, when convenient to hopefully get some of those schools that have expressed an interest to uh, be signed up here in the first instance we framed this as an offer for primary schools that's not by accident you know that's where our experience and our expertise lies and there are all things about the way in which primary school curriculum and timetable are configured that make it a slightly easier win in the first instance mm. but that doesn't mean to say that we've forgotten about to the rest of the world and that's everything from preschool settings to out of school settings to secondary school settings etc etc um we would love to continue to develop the uh, the offer in ways that make it relevant and uh, uh, tweaked for those contexts as well. That's, that's, that's excellent. I mean, it's such a crucial part of the, the Cornish language programme. You know, we're making real real progress with numbers of le adult learners, uh, the number of tra translations is going up, but it's, it's the schools getting into the schools that's always been the difficulty. And it's so crucial having that, that younger generation coming through. I, I learned just to count one to 10 when I went to a Logan school many decades ago, but it, you know, it, it was enough to put the seed in my head and, um, and it was a starting point for me. So it's, it's great to see this. And I think what you've got is a really good flexible thing that better meets the needs of teachers and schools. So really excited to see how this rolls out now. We also hope to include, um, there's a kind of, we're hoping to create a couple of awards um, with uh, other organisations such as the GORSEF and uh, the Heritage Awards with Cornwall Museum Partnership um, and possibly Cornwall Heritage Trust so that there are actual categories that schools can enter specific to hopefully the Charter, um, which will hopefully again spread that a little bit wider and also find that schools, families and communities are more engaged with those organisations as a consequence. So, yeah, we've got lots of good stuff still to come. But thank you all for your time today. Very much appreciated. Take care, See you all again directly.